One thing that a lot of people don't realize about Birded Paradise is that they're not born doing those courtship displays exactly the way that, that we see them and admire them as adults. For the first few years of their life, they probably don't do anything that looks like a courtship display at all. And then at some point in time, the young males, they start going through transitions in their bodies and their behaviors where they start doing rudimentary versions of it. They're hardwired from their genes through their DNA to start doing courtship displays, but yet they don't have the feathers yet, and they only do rudimentary versions of them, but they begin to essentially practice them, and they practice them in isolation by themselves. They watch adult males performing the, the real deal to actual females and mating, and then they practice to each other. One young male plays the role of the female, and the other one plays the role of the male. This one practices his display, and this one pretends like it's watching, and then they switch. And this goes on for hours at a time during the day, for months out of the year, for many years. In many cases, three, four years of this kind of practice behavior. And so only then, when they transition into their first adult plumage, do they start doing this thing that we recognize as the full courtship display. So it's this incredible combination of learning behavior and feedback between practicing with your own body movement and the acquisition of your costume, if you will, and being able to then put those motions into place in the way that they're supposed to be, and the genetics behind it, both the behavior and the feathers. I don't think a lot of people have an appreciation that that's what's going on in these birds. When we're thinking about traits in Birds of Paradise, or at least the different traits in males that females are, are keying into and have selected on in the past, it's easy to think of the feather traits, the unusual ornaments, the shapes, the colors. But I don't think everybody really thinks of behavior as being a trait just like any other, when in fact it is. These complex behaviors are parts of complex sequences of events that are genetic in their origin, and yet they also have this component of being refined and learned, so they have an environmental component. But the thing is, that's true for all of those traits. Feathers don't always grow the exact same way that they're genetically wired to because the food wasn't available in the same way that year. There's an environmental component to those things that are easy to understand as traits as well. So dance is not just practiced, but it's actually a genetic adaptation. And literally, there are genes for ballerina dance or waggle. There's a gene for waggle. <laughs> I definitely don't think we can simplify it to the point where there is a gene for waggle or a gene for psychedelic smiley face dance. But there are thousands or hundreds or dozens some number of genes that are involved in producing those things, and they are heritable. And that when a female bird of paradise selects a male for some component of his display behavior, that his sons inherit that behavior and some component of it, and they will be more likely to be more similar in that behavior to their father than to other males, just like they will be in plumage or, or shape of their feathers.